to thank you so much for your unwavering support during our short absence from YouTube. The recent mass layoffs from tech kept the team busy as we try to help friends and subscribers find new jobs. If you have been affected by the layoffs, you are not alone. We are going to be candid here with you. Sometimes things are beyond your control. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on the point of view, companies are driven by profit and people become secondary. Well, to us, you will never be secondary. Without people like you, those companies would not be able to exist. That being said, life happens. If it didn't happen to you, or even if it did, it is a great reminder that we should always be prepared. Prepared technically prepared emotionally so that if the worst happens, we can quickly transition to a new job. Now, we are obviously idealizing the situation because landing a new job can take some time, but that precious time should be spent interviewing and negotiating your new salaries. So in order to spend your time doing that, you should be already prepared technically so that you don't spend the first month of your job search studying for interviews. A great way to stay ahead and prepared for any eventuality, it is to be actively working on your interview skills. How can you possibly do that if you don't have enough time to schedule interviews? Easy, you are doing it right now by watching these type of videos. And if you feel like you need to devote extra time to solve more challenging problems from real interview settings, consider stopping by our Patreon channel. Even though we have been absent from YouTube for a little while, we have been very active in Patreon, constantly posting questions and guiding our subscribers. We had a surge of messages and subscribers at the peak of the mass layoffs asking us for help. Some of you even offered us hundreds of dollars to prioritize your messages. While we certainly appreciate your Patreon contributions and your generous offers, remember that we are not motivated to do this by money. After all, the salaries of big tech do provide a comfortable living standard. Instead, we are driven by you. We remember what it's like to be under pressure to perform well on interviews. If we didn't get to your message or couldn't reply to you, it was because we were completely saturated and frankly a little overwhelmed. Helping you land jobs is a responsibility we do not take lightly. Anyway, Patreon is currently a repository of very interesting questions that will no doubt get you ready to face almost any interview. Now, without further delay, let us get back to the content that we have prepared for you. Today, we are delving into the dark arts of power distribution network design, otherwise known as PDN design. Although this question may be about PDN design, we are sure there is a thing or two our fellow analog ninjas and even digital ones can learn from this lesson. PDNs are the unsung heroes of any electronic system, taking a backseat in the glitz and glamour of high-speed processor, memory units, data converters, etc. But trust us, without them, every device would be as good as a brick, or even worse, a very expensive space heater. Let's say you are logging into your Zoom interview. By the way, are on-site interviews even a thing anymore? Anyway, the interviewer grits you and right off the bat throws the problem at you. He says the following. We are trying to figure out the specs for a PDN for a new product we are building. 
our customer is a microprocessor core. Beyond that, we have no additional information. How can we start designing the PDN? This is one of the most open-ended questions you will face. Depending on your level of experience, the question may be posed exactly as this if you are a seasoned engineer. However, if you are a junior engineer, the interviewer will likely give you additional details. We are going to play the role of someone with some experience on this field. So, what can we ask first, you think to yourself? Back to basics time, right? Well, to the first order, a PDN can be thought of as a network of R's, L's, and C's. that distribute the power from a voltage regulator to the microprocessor. Ideally, the voltage measured at the microprocessor input should be the same as the output voltage of the regulator powering it. This is, of course, provided that we do not want to place an explicit load line on our PDN. The explicit load line is somewhat of a more advanced topic and we may touch on it on a different video. Ideally, the voltage measured at the microprocessor input should be the same as the output voltage of the regulator powering it. However, that will not be the case due to voltage noise in the PDN due to its impedance. This noise can either be undershoots or overshoots. Great! Voltage noise is a function of current and impedance, right? So you tell the interviewer, we should ask the customer what is the minimum voltage noise that the microprocessor can see while still operating reliable. A side question for our digital ninjas. Why is the question we ask the interviewer important? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. So the interviewer replies, let's assume the customer can tolerate 50 millivolts of noise from the target voltage and still operate reliably. Let's remember that the target voltage is the voltage level you would like to be regulating the input of the SOC. On top of this voltage, there will be noise. When the interviewer mentioned a spec of 50 millivolts, it certainly meant peak to peak, as noise can exhibit both positive and negative values. If you are not sure, you can always ask the interviewer for clarification. We now know how much voltage noise we can tolerate in our system. Remember we are tasked with defining the impedance of the PDN. But is this enough information to define the impedance profile of the PDN? Absolutely not. What else do we need to define the voltage noise seen at the PDN? The current. Any current? No, the worst case current, right? So we tell the interviewer, we would also need to ask the customer what is the maximum current drawn by the microprocessor. To which the interviewer says, let's assume the worst case current is an amplitude of um, 1 amp. If we didn't have any inductors or capacitors in the PDN, we would likely be done as we can simply calculate the IR drop and set the target resistance that would guarantee that we don't violate our noise spec. Unfortunately, since we do not live in an ideal world, we are not done yet. What other questions could we ask the customer in order to solve the problem? Make sure you write your answers in the comments so you can compare your answers to ours. We are at a very interesting point in this interview. If you want to see the conclusion to this problem and compare your answers to ours, make sure to tune in next time. And to make sure you do not miss the next part of this exciting journey, remember to click that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. Cheers. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking us out. Don't forget to support us by subscribing to the channel and checking out our Patreon site. Here is some sample content that you can find from our contributors.